Okay, after an enforced break, thanks to the influenza virus, we'll now get back to the forearm. So we've talked about the muscles of the anterior forearm, now we're moving to the muscles of the posterior forearm. All we're doing here is working out how to identify each of the muscles. Um, this is the same process I use when students ask me on a cadaver or a model, what's what. Um, so we're not really talking about um, detailed ideas about where the muscles attach to, um, their innovation, it's all the radial nerve, um, or anything like that. It's identifying the muscles of the posterior forearm. posterior forearm is a little bit more complex than the anterior forearm but the same rules apply the same principles um, where does the muscle go to um, and then what action does the muscle give sprinkle on a little bit of Greek and Latin and either we'll work out the name of the muscle correctly or we'll get ourselves close enough that our brain pops the right, right word into our heads right that's the idea all right then, what do we need to know? Right, well everything's gonna be right arm today. Right arm, right arm, uh, right arm. And then the trick with the sides is look out for the thumb, see where the, the thumb is. Um, bones wise, we've got the humerus and then we've got the radius and the ulna. So remember, you take your radial pulse up here, up by the thumb, so this is the radius up here. Here's the thumb, so this is the radius, it's the radius that rotates around the ulna in pronation and supination. So we have the radius and the ulna, and then the bones of the wrist down here, these are the carpal bones, and then these of course are the digits. This one here is a bit special, it gets called the thumb. Um, this is the pollex, muscles that move the pollex tend to be called uh, pollicis or pollicis, whichever one you, you prefer. So, those give us an idea of what the muscles are going to attach to and then give them part of their name. And then um, this would be flexion. So flexion of the wrist, extension of the wrist. So flexion of the fingers, extension of the fingers, right? Thumb's a little bit different, we'll get to that later. Um, the other thing is, we can talk about, um, in the anatomical position, we can talk about, you know, um, adduction and abduction. It's often clearer to talk about ulnar deviation and radial deviation, right? So if the radius is over here, and I <laughs> can't really flex my wrist there. So if, I, if, the ulna, if the ulna is over here, and I flex my wrist that away, we would call that ulnar deviation. If the radius is over, over here, then we talk about radial deviation, but I can't, I can't go that far that far okay one of the first muscles to get rid of again might be brachioradialis so this muscle here is actually crossing the elbow is it a muscle of the forearm is it a muscle of the elbow whatever you need to be able to identify it right here brachioradialis this is the brachium this is the antibrachium the arm and the forearm uh, and as, as I said on this side we've got the radial bone so brachioradialis runs from the, the humerus to the radius and um, this is your beer drinkers muscle right this is the muscle that that pops up when you want to flex your elbow against resist when your thumb is pointing upwards and you're flexing the elbow it's brachioradialis that pops up there so that's brachioradialis so here's brachioradialis radialis here and you see the tendon running that way now, with brachioradialis, as we run around, so here's the extensor compartment, this is posterior. Look, we can see there's a muscle there and there's a muscle there. So this muscle then, where's this going to? Oh, it's, oh, it's going there, but it's, it's wrapped over by some other muscles of the thumb, we'll get to those later. But otherwise, it looks like the tendon runs to here. So this would be then an extensor and it's going to the muscles of the wrist. So it's gonna be a carpi, and it's on the radial side. So this must be extensor carpi radialis. But the trick is there's two of them. There are two extensor carpi radialis muscles. Right, this, one, this one's got a long tendon here. So this is gonna be extensor carpi radialis longus because it's actually going further. All right, so you can, you can feel this on yourself, but here, if there's the electron on there, on either side, there's two lumpy bony bits. 
this lumpy bony bit here is the lateral epicondyle of the of the humerus and that's where most of these extensor muscles are coming from so this muscle here is actually it's actually above that so it's actually coming from the humerus up here so it's longer so this must be extensor carpi radialis longus and then the muscle next to it can you see how extensor carpi radialis longus laps over the top this is actually coming from the bony lateral epicondyle and this is also running through to the wrist so this will be extensor carpi radialis brevis yeah i know tricky very very tricky start now as we continue oh this looks a bit better Look, here's a muscle and it's giving off lots of tendons to the digits and it's on the extensor compartment so this is going to give extension of the digits right extension of the digits so this is going to be extensor digitorum now on the other side we saw there are two layers of flexor digitorum muscles but in the on the extensor compartment on the posterior side there's only one one layer of extensor digitorum muscle so we just have extensor digitorum that's it so that's nice oh no actually look we look here we can see there are two tendons here oh no and there are two tendons here as well so actually there's an extra muscle so with, there's another muscle in here which specifically goes to the index finger so this is the tendon of extensor indices and what this does this lets us while we, some of our fingers have to move together because they're tied together by this connective tissue here linking the extensor tendons together we can, we can do more pointing with our pointing finger so we have more control with our index finger just like we do with our thumb so the extensor indices is a second tendon and you might be able to see this on your own hand that goes just to this finger here so then on the other side with the little finger where we have a similar thing so the little finger has more movement as well so there's a second muscle that runs to the little finger the little finger is digiti minimi so this tendon here uh, there we go we can see more of an individual separate muscle here this is extensor digiti minimi okay so that's those guys there now we can see another tendon here that's going to the wrist and that also is coming from so this is this is again coming from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus but this muscle here then is coming from the lateral epicondyle because there's the olecranon on there right so this is coming from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and running to the the carpus and this is on the ulnar side so this must be extensor carpi ulnaris and there isn't another one so that's just extensor carpi ulnaris on its own ah look here's a thing so there's the olecranon on there which is whoop, there's the olecranon on there right so if that is extensor carpi ulnaris then this muscle next to it will be anconius so anconius is also running from that lateral epicondyle of the where am I lateral epicondyle of the humerus and it's going to run around the olecranon they go around the olecranon and then uh, this is this is the little finger side here so this is going to be the ulna right so the anconius is going to kind of attach to the lateral epicondyle and various bits of the, the the elbow joint and run across to the ulna so that's anconius there that's the last part now we're getting into the anterior compartment so those are the muscles of the posterior compartment so brachioradialis extensor carpi radialis longus extensor carpi radialis brevis um, and then we see all these tendons of this muscle which is extensor digitorum go into the fingers and then we have the extra muscles of extensor indices go into the index finger and extensor digiti minimi go into the little finger and then as we come around here we see extensor carpi ulnaris and anconius there but that's not everything is it because when we were looking at these tendons we saw them being overlapped by these muscles here so these then 
these are the muscles look these tendons are running up to the thumb so these are the muscles of the thumb how do we work out what those three tendons are here honestly the same principle still applies we just need to consider the movements of the thumb all right so the thumb is on a plane at 90 degrees to that of the fingers so if this is flexion of the fingers and extension of the fingers the thumb this is flexion of the thumb this is extension of the thumb all right so flexion of the thumb extension of the thumb so that's extension um, abduction is like this right so this is abduction of the thumb because this is the adductor of the thumb right this webbing here in there that muscle uh, adductor pollicis so that muscle will always bring the thumb that will adduct the thumb that will bring the thumb back and think about the line that's running in now if you look at your thumb you can see these tendons here and when you do that when you when you extend your tongue tongue they all they tongue <sighs> So if you look at these tendons, see what happens when you move your thumb around, right? When you extend your thumb, now yeah, they all pop out, that's no use. But when you abduct your thumb, oh, I can only see that tendon working there. That tendon is tight, the others aren't so tight anymore. Huh, what does that mean for our model then? So here's the thumb. Here's the thumb. Here are these tendons here and the muscles that we've got to figure out what's what. And it was this tendon here that was standing up when I was abducting my thumb. So this is going to be abductor pollicis, and it's going to be longest because there's an abductor pollicis brevis in here in the base of the thumb. We're not talking about those guys today. But this then is going to be abductor pollicis longus. Right. Now these two tendons, they were both active when I was extending my thumb. So these are going to be extensor pollicis, and one of them is going to be extensor pollicis brevis, and one of them is going to be extensor pollicis longus. Right, now you see this tendon here? It's got a long tendon, and the extensor pollicis longus is actually going to be a muscle deep to all of these things. So this is going to be the tendon of extensor pollicis longus, it's going to be deep in there, and this is going to be the tendon of extensor pollicis brevis. Tricky stuff, I can never remember it, I have to work it out every time. There's another muscle on here, which I don't think we can see. Um, we can kind of get an idea of it maybe deep in the proximal part of the posterior forearm. There's a muscle again, wrapping from the lateral epicondyle, but it's wrapping around kind of to the radius. Um, and this is a uh, supinator. So if this is, you know, uh, pronation, supination, it's wrapping around in the posterior compartment to the radius so that when the radius is, is, is like that, supinator can then pull on the radius to supinate the forearm. And that's it. Um, yeah, I know it's tricky, it's more complicated, there's quite a lot going on there, it's difficult, but if you apply those principles of where is the muscle going to, what movement is it causing, which is gonna be extension of the wrist or extension of the fingers or whatever, or something to do with the thumb, then you can work out its name. It's gonna be extensor carpi radialis. Oh, there's two of them. You have to remember there's a short one and a long one. Extensor carpi ulnaris, there's just what, do you know what I mean? Still gonna take some work. You can't just watch some guy on the internet and expect to get it. It takes a lot of work. But hopefully um, that'll help to identify the muscles of the posterior forearm. All right, good luck. Yeah, get stuck in.